had that moment of, do I turn around and go the other way and take longer, or do I wait for them? And in the end, I waited. And it wasn't too long, but it did mean I ended up late in Rawcliffe. And uh, uh, so I'm still behind. That's, that's my excuse. It wasn't because I preached for an hour and a half, you'll be glad to know. But then I might preach for an hour and a half here. Right, okay. Um, tomorrow there's a sewing group here at 10. There's a PCC at Garth Lane at 10.30. What number is it? I can't remember. 23 Garth Lane. Um, there's an art group here in the evening at 7. And then on Tuesday, midweek worship is here. And Thursday, Nit and Nat is here at 10. And uh, thank you to everybody who helped with the shoot yesterday. I th- uh, it was really good, I thought, and uh, a good pilot. Uh, we learned a few things that we'll do differently next time. And we uh, learned a few things like don't do a shoot on the same day as England playing football. And <laughs> Um, such like things but uh, but it was lovely um, and uh, I think engaged a good group the gift day isn't going to happen next weekend it's going to be in September and also a date for your diaries on the 10th of September at 1.30 we're trying to get um, together anybody who might be willing or wants to be involved in our 800th anniversary so we're trying to get people from anybody who'd partner with us uh, to make that a special occasion. Uh, so we'll be inviting parish council, com- uh, community groups, uh, probably we'll invite the MP and etc. I don't know whether we'll get him, but anyhow. Uh, and uh, county councillors and all sorts of people, museum, anybody who might be willing. So if you can think of anybody who we should be inviting uh, to come and talk about what they want to help us with, what they would like to do for our 800th anniversary, uh, the archaeology people and so on. Uh, We're trying to have a meeting uh, to begin to get some really solid things sorted for next year. And that's on Tuesday, 10th of September at 1.30. I think that's all the notices for the moment, unless somebody has something else I should be giving out. And tickets. It will be ticketed in hour long slots. Okay, so our first hymn today is number 315. We stand to sing.
As we stand, let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we sit or kneel to continue with our prayers. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. And on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church, and so rule the heart of thy chosen servant, Charles, our king and governor, that he knowing whose minister he is, may above all things seek thy honour and glory, and that we and all his subjects, duly considering whose authority he hath, may faithfully serve, honour and humbly obey him, in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sit for the reading from the Old Testament. <clears throat> the lesson is from the first chapter of the book of Nehemiah, beginning to read at the first verse. The words of Nehemiah, son of Achaliah, in the month of Kislev, in the twentieth year, while I was in the citadel, citadel of Susa, Anani, one of my brothers, came from Judah with some other men, and I questioned them about the Jewish remnant that had survived the exile, and also about Jerusalem. They said to me, those who survived the exile and are back in the province are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down, and its gates have been burned with fire. When I heard these things, I sat down and wept. For some days I mourned and fasted, and prayed before the God of heaven. Then I said, Lord, the God of heaven, the great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments. Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer your servant is praying before you day and night for your servants, the people of Israel. I confess the sins we Israelites, including myself and my father's family, have committed against you. We have acted very wickedly toward you. We have not obeyed the commands, decrees, and laws you gave your servant Moses. Remember the instruction you gave your servant Moses, saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey my commands, even then, if your exiled people are at the furthest horizon, I will gather them from there 
and bring them to the place I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. They are your servants and your people, whom you redeemed by your great strength and your mighty hand. Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of this your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give your servant success today by granting him favour in the presence of this man. I was cupbearer to the king. Here endeth the lesson. We're going to uh, say the psalm together as has been our custom recently. And uh, this side will say the words at A and the uh, north, south, south side of the church will say the words at B. Are you the north? You're the north. You're the north, aren't you? I'm sorry, I get these things confused sometimes. Right. Uh, our side together. Your eternal word, O Lord, stands firm in heaven. Your regulations remain true to this day, for everything serves your plans. If your instruction hadn't sustained me with joy, I would have died in my misery. I will never forget your commandments, for by them you give me life. Though the wicked hide along the way to kill me, I will quietly keep my mind on your laws. Even perfection has its limits, but your commands have no limits. I remain seated for the reading from the epistle. The epistle is written in the second chapter of Paul's letter to the Philippians, beginning to read at the first verse. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but, but each of you to the interests of the others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, <coughs> even death on a cross. Here ends the epistle. Stand to sing from our sheets uh, the hymn, Blessed are the Pure in Heart.
The Holy Gospel is written in the first chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning at the 13th verse. The Lord be to you, o Lord. Jesus as saying to his Father, Now I am coming to you. I told them many things while I was with them in this world, so that they would be filled with my joy. I have given them your word, and the world hates them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them safe from the evil one. They do not belong to this world any more than I do. Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth, just as you sent me into the world. I am sending them into the world. And I give myself as a holy sacrifice for them, so they can be made holy by your truth. I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I are one. As you are in me, Father, and I am in you. And may they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We remain standing to declare the creed together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things are made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. He shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we stand, let us pray. Dear Lord, we ask that as we think about the teaching of Scripture, as we think about what you said and what you prayed, so it may help us and inspire us to follow you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please do be seated. The uh, passage we had from uh, the writing of John uh, in uh, his uh, gospel is one of the, uh, I think, most special passages in scripture. And why do I think that? It's because uh, the uh, passage uh, speaks uh, of Jesus praying for us. In verse 20, he says, I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. Jesus prays for us, each one of us. He prays that they will all be one, just as you and I are one, just as the Father and the Son are one, as you are in me, Father, and I am in you. And may they be in us so that the world may believe you sent me. Jesus elsewhere says uh, that they will uh, 
that the world might know that we are Christians by our love. He uh, examples two things here in the way that he describes and prays for us. One is his relationship with God. And as Christians, we have uh, quite a unique uh, version of our understanding of what God is like. The Judaic, uh, Judaic, oh, anyhow, the, the religions that come from Judaism um, are uh, Ju uh, uh, Judaism and uh, Islam and Christianity all believe that there is one God, but the other two do not believe that there are God is three but one. We have this uniqueness of this relationship within that grouping. And uh, many other religions either believe in one God or in many, many gods who do different things in different places. We have quite a uniqueness that we believe in a God who is one but three. And what does that mean about who we believe in? It means that we believe in a God who relates. A God who is love in relationship. A God who shows his love through relationship. And we see that relationship in action in the way that Jesus and the Father uh, are in their conversations and their relationships during Jesus' life on earth. We see that uh, Jesus starts his ministry by spending time talking to his Father and learning what his Father wants. He's tempted uh, to go off and do what his father does not want by the devil at the end of that 40 days of prayer. And uh, he could have gone wherever he wanted. His father does not control him but gives him free will. It is a relationship of love. It's a relationship of open discussion. And here we have some more of that open discussion where Jesus is asking his father to do things uh, that he believes his father wants. And of course in Gethsemane, we get him asking that he does, is set free from his father's will, but to do, uh, if his father will is the right thing, to continue and do it. And so there is at the heart of this relationship a openness for freedom and for disagreement and for working through of the relationship uh, in the relationship between God and uh, Jesus and the gift of the Spirit who speaks to us and helps us to understand what God is like. It is a God who is uh, trying to help us to love. He prays that we might be one uh, in the way that we interact with each other. And uh, we see that uh, the early church from the very beginning struggles with this because humans disagree. We so easily disagree about so many things and we uh, put great weight on our disagreements often and on persuading our arguments that the others should agree with us. And we see even uh, in Paul and Peter and James some of those early disagreements in the church beginning to raise their head and beginning to be discussed through because they held on to this belief that they should be uh, of one heart and mind, that the church should only have uh, agreed uh, opinion that is one opinion, and that that's what they should be going forward with. It's where the word Catholic comes from, to be united in our hearts and our minds, not necessarily uh, that... Uh, we are uh, holding on to uh, some of what people think is Catholic, but actually the idea of being together. Uh, but uh, throughout history, throughout uh, the early church, there continues to be disagreement, and there continues to be attempts to hold that agreement together, or disagreement together, uh, and avoid schism. Uh, and uh, one of the earliest councils of the church uh, the way they solved the problem was that uh, the uh, people who thought that they were right got together, made the decisions before the others got there and then <laughs> told them what the decision was uh, and they were a majority so that was that and, and at times if you read uh, um, 
uh, early, hist early church history, there was a beginning of the uh, use of gangs and thugs to uh, beat the other people into submission. And then, of course, we come to the uh, great divisions of the Reformation after the schism with the Eastern Church uh, between the Eastern Orthodox and the Roman Church. As over various things, uh, you get the Reformation and uh, the beginning of so many, many divisions where we uh, cease to be one because we see what Jesus has been teaching, what the Bible says, and we disagree with one another. And it must uh, indeed hurt Christ, particularly where we don't just disagree in mind, but we disagree in the way uh, that won't allow the others to have any freedom of will and we use violence and destruction uh, and all sorts of things, how it was ever right for us to take one another to the stake or to put thumbscrews on one another or to do any of those awful things that were claimed to be done in the name of Christ in order to make sure that somebody agreed with us and fitted in with the united view of what the church thought. I do not know. I do not know how Christ must feel and the agony he must feel over the divisions that we are in and have been in. And indeed, how he must feel that uh, we are not showing what God is like because we will not live in love. And uh, many people could accuse us of saying cynically, see how these Christians love one another. And in fact, we don't seem to love one another at all. So how do we deal with this? Well, St. Paul gives us um, some idea of how we uh, may be able to deal with the fact that we will not ever agree. We will always be uh, affected by our pasts and by the thoughts that we have been given. We will be affected by the interpretation that we hold on to, and we will uh, disagree. He starts by saying, listen to one another. Be humble. Don't think that you're right all the time. Think of others as better than yourself and don't look out only for your own interests. St. Paul gives us that picture that matches to the picture of Jesus relating to God, that he gives freedom of will to the others and allows their voice to be heard. It has been said uh, that... Uh, we have two eyes, two ears, and one mouth, and that we should uh, take four attempts at listening or seeing before we try and speak. It's also been said that when you point your finger, there's three more fingers pointing back at you. Or as Jesus said, take, uh, don't try and take the speck out of somebody else's eye unless you first take the log out of your own. Do not judge unless you be judged. There is a need for us to be honest, humble, and willing to recognize that our position is not necessarily right. And even if it is right, that others may have uh, some reason for holding on to what we think is wrong. And we must find a way within that to allow us to disagree, but disagree to part. To love one another, even when we don't necessarily agree with what other people would want to do in the name of religion, in the way that they would want to worship, in the niceties of some of the details of what we think is Christian. We should be able to hold a way of saying, I think this and I cannot agree with what you think, but I am not going to disparage or put you down. I'm going to love you. I'm going to value you and I'm going to allow you to continue to hold to your view, even if I continue to argue that you might change it. I'm not going to force you. I'm not going to use these wrong ways to enable these things to happen. And then it may be that we are able to hold together in that unity, not a unity which uh, agrees on everything, but a unity which sees that love and the building together of relationship and community the building together of a hope which says each person is valued and valuable is possible and that uh, we may find a way of loving 
uh, that matches to the love of God. Of course, there will be some truths that we cannot uh, allow ourselves to uh, disagree with, to cross the barrier of doing this or that, which is inherently uh, awful and uh, uh, wrong, and we must always oppose those things which are destructive. But somehow, we need to be those who find a way that doesn't do that uh, in a way that is petty or silly or uh, selfish or rude, uh, but is generous and kind, not self-seeking, but full of compassion and mercy. For that is the nature of God. It's the nature of what Christianity should be. It's the nature of what we want to show to the world of who God is. So let us be inspired by our Lord and Saviour who prays for us. He prays that we might find a way to show the world what love is. And let us seek to enable that to happen so that we might show to the world what God is and heal many of the brokenness and hardships that exist where people are not able to find a resolution to these problems. Amen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth where the rust and moth doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither rust nor moth doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through and steal. All things come of thee and of thine own do we give thee. Whoso, whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother hath need, and shutteth up his compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him. Our offertory hymn is hymn number 33, We Stand to Sing.
We sit or kneel for our prayers of intercession. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church, militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes and governors, and especially thy servant Charles, our king, that under him we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto his whole council and to all that are put in authority under him that they may truly and impartially minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, Give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that, with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them, who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace, so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant me so, Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Merciful Father, accept Amen. these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as we gather at the Lord's table, we must recall the promises and warnings given to us in the Scriptures. Let us therefore examine ourselves and repent of our sins. Let us give thanks to God for his redemption of the world through his Son, Jesus Christ. And as we remember Christ's death for us and receive this pledge of his love, let us resolve to serve him in holiness and righteousness all the days of our life. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and to make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnest repent 
and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, all of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith. If any man sin... We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It's very meet, right in our bounded duty, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and an institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. O Lamb of God, 
that take us away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that take us away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that take us away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace.
Let us pray. O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy humble servants, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy and lively sacrifice unto thee. Humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. We stand for the glory. Together, glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Remain standing to sing hymn number 624.
the peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always.